Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Jeremiah Dooley, and I lead developer advocacy for containers at AWS. I'm coming to you from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm absolutely thrilled to introduce you all to Yvonne Roberts. She's a software architect for Bill.com and one of our amazing AWS serverless heroes. Yvonne, thanks for being part of Hybrid Cloud Day. Thank you, Jeremiah, for having me. It's, it's definitely awesome to be here with you guys. Well, we are super excited to have you. Can you take a quick minute and just tell us a little bit about you, about your role, and a little bit about what your company does? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, Yvonne Roberts, as you heard, um, AWS serverless hero. So I create content both internally at my company as well as externally around serverless solutions and, and making it easier for developers to, to get started. Um, so build.com is a great company to work for. Um, they are focused on creating intelligent solutions so that customers can be able to create uh, bills and pay those bills as well as create invoices and get paid. And then build.com also offers spend and expense management. And so to give you kind of an idea of like the, the volume that we work with, um, as of June 2022, of the 100 top accounting firms in the United States, build.com is a partner with 80, more than 80 of those. Um, additionally, also as of that same date, we have served 400,000 businesses as well. And then lastly, for fiscal year 2022, um, we've processed over 225 billion in total payment volume for our customers. Wow, that's kind of amazing. I know that a lot of the discussions that we've had today have been around issues that are related to managing infrastructure in a hybrid model. Can you share with us some of the top challenges that you've seen where you are today? Yeah, I would say there, there's three top challenges, you know, being able to deploy on-premise as well as in the cloud. Um, I would say it's infrastructure parity, there's scalability parity, and then global expansion. And so what I mean is the way we deploy on AWS is very different from how we deploy on-premises, um, as well as how we implement security controls, both on-premises versus in the cloud. And so our ops team, our, our security team, they need to be well-versed with on-premise as well as in the cloud. Um, if we need to scale, right, do we, how we do that on AWS is usually a couple clicks of a, of a button, right? And you have a beefier EC2 instance. Um, on premise, that's another story, right? You have purchase orders, you have approvals, you have then the actual installation of the hardware and configuration. And so it takes more time on premises. And then in terms of global expansion, right, there are countries that have requirements where their customers' data needs to, for example, be within that country. And so do we make a re new relationship with the data center there, or do we do that on AWS? And, and so those challenges really, really make it a little difficult, right, to make a decision on what sure. do we do next. Yeah, that totally makes sure. And if we look at your situation, there's some of those challenges that are pretty universal for anyone who's using a hybrid model, and then some of them that are definitely unique to your situation and where build.com is. When you look to try to solve these, what factored into that decision? And then ultimately, why did you make a final decision to move forward using the AWS solution that you came to? Yeah, so it was, um, we took a step back, right? And evaluated, like, what are our thresholds, let's say in terms of compute? or in terms of storage. For example, build.com is very document intensive. Every transaction has either a bill, an invoice, or a receipt at a minimum, right? And it could be N of those. And so storage is really important to us. And so we decided, okay, what do we wanna do with those documents? Do we continue to grow our storage on premises? Do we now move that to the cloud? And then I mentioned earlier about um, global um, expansion. It was also, you know, making those decisions, like what do we want to invest in? Do we want to do data center or the cloud? And so we decided cloud. Um, it, we felt like it gave us a lot of benefits there. And we created a couple of initial projects on the cloud um, to kind of develop a point of view and also like give teams like the patterns, like this is how you right. implement, this is how you um, should do it. Um, and so, so that was great. That was awesome. But then, you know, you have what's on, on premises and what do you do with that? How do you um, work there? And so one thing that we have is, um, is cell-based architecture and I'll pop up on the screen kind of what that looks like and I'll talk you through that a little bit. But basically what it means is we segment by customer. So you, Jeremiah, as a customer of build.com, your the compute that you use when you log into us, the data that we store for you is all within one cell. Okay. And what's really cool about that is that it allows us to 
uh, fulfill our contractual obligations, for example, with financial services companies that require that our data be on premise for their customers. Right. right. It also helps the other global expansion comment that I mentioned where, OK, now all your data, everything needs to be within the country that you reside. And so that cell based architecture, if you look here, we have n number of cells in our primary data center. Those are all replicated, of course, because DR is important. Um, and then additionally, we now said, OK, our CTO said, I want you to build your next cell on AWS. And so then you have that right hand side where Direct Connect is enabled to be able to have good communication between there. There's some level of data replication to be able to handle authentication and other shared services. Um, but our, our CTO just invested both the time and space so that our software engineers, our infrastructure folks, our ops folks could just step back and say, how do we do this and how do we do this right? Yeah. Uh, and so was, from an architecture yeah. standpoint, the cells really become the the center of everything. I mean, it's how you do your geographic placement. It's how you do your customer placement. Like it feels like that becomes that core object that everything else falls into place around. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that, that's definitely accurate. Um, and so as we expand and say, OK, now we want to um, work with the Canada market, right? We go and we deploy a new cell with a click of a button in Canada, for example, or in the UK and so on and so forth. So, so it, it's it's pretty powerful yeah, and definitely helpful to have AWS regions and all those places where you have customers. Exactly. And, you know, bringing that compute close to end users is, is definitely important, you know, to have that good latency um, for them is also great. Awesome. Well, one of the things that I like about projects like this is that point where everything gets implemented enough that you can look back and see what you learned. Are there some things that you went through to get to this point that you think might be helpful for the audience? Yeah, um, for sure. I would say um, most importantly, that executive buy-in was really key for us um, to be able to give us that time and space to innovate and to do the right thing was the most, you know, that that catalyst, you know, that got us down this journey. Um, additionally, I would say the partnership that we had with AWS was awesome. Um, from anywhere from our account managers to the essays, the specialist essays that we worked out with to make sure that we had that well-architected um, solution in place was key. Um, I would also say like that that ability for teams to be able to like up level themselves and and invest in the right tooling to make it easier for those that are not at that level yet to be able to click a couple buttons and then they're suddenly in AWS is is also um, was pretty powerful for us. Yeah, we hear a lot about tooling. Was there anything specifically in that area that you focused on that you think paid dividends in the end? Yeah, um, I, I would mention two things. So we used a tool called Backstage IO to be able to create templates that would basically do all the scaffolding for right. you for a microservice. Additionally, the code, the compute that's in those microservices, we leveraged hexagonal architecture and, and separated things like how is this deployed, how this um, receives requests versus like the actual business logic. And one thing that that really gave us that was powerful was the ability to create these cloud native solutions, right? But to also be able to deploy them on premise, deploy them on a Lambda or deploy them on a container or EC2 instance, et cetera. It gave us that like flexibility. Um, which was pretty awesome. That's amazing. So now that you've gotten it off the ground, now that things are in production, what's the bottom line? Have you been able to measure how much this project impacted the business? Yeah, for sure. Um, there's kind of like those soft benefits, right? We are able to stay ahead of business. Um, we are able to stay ahead of load. Um, with the, the cell-based architecture that we deployed on AWS, we took a lot of iterative approaches on that so that it was more cloud native. And now we have the ability to both scale horizontally as well as vertically seamlessly in the cloud, which has been pretty awesome. Um, one of the things that we did was use um, AWS Fargate to be able to deploy with um, ECS, ECS. Yes. Um, and, and that has also paid dividends in terms of cost. So in our lower environments, for example, we've had more than 80 percent in, in cost savings, wow. as well as in production. We've had, you know, 30 percent savings in production, which has been great. Um, yeah. There's at the end of the day, though, like it's that ability to stay ahead of customers that I think has been really powerful. 
That's amazing. Well, I definitely appreciate you sharing your insights with everyone here. This has been really great to see a customer and how they've actually put this into production and some of the results that they've seen. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for having me.